Hey, I'm Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and today I want to bring you some new research that I'm doing on the fountain of youth. <laughs> um, so I actually, there is going to be some science here. So what I'm about to share with you, I believe, is the physical fountain of youth for human beings. And if we learn to tap into this part of our system, which is in the fascial system, then I believe you're gonna heal faster than you injure. You're going to feel light and buoyant and free. You're gonna be able to move stress and trauma through your system super quickly without taking it on and letting it affect you physically. And you're just gonna feel better on a daily basis. something called hyaluronic acid or HA for short. <laughs> so I'm gonna call it HA maybe from now on. Um, so HA lives in part inside your fascial system but it, was, it doesn't just live there, it gets created there and hyaluron hyaluronic acid, see that's why I should call it HA, HA is synthesized by a new type of cell that's been discovered and named a fascocyte. So this is brand new research coming out of Europe, the European Fascia Congress, and in particular, a, an Italian researcher named Carla Stecco. And she has discovered the cell that lives inside the fascial matrix, the extracellular matrix, and she named it the fascocyte. And it's the fascocyte in particular within that ECM that synthesizes hyaluronic acid. <laughs> and I'm gonna kind of circle back around here, but hyaluronic acid is important because, well, for many reasons. In and of itself, it can actually heal wounds very rapidly. So, you know, you want a lot of hyaluronic acid in your, you know, skin and the superficial fascia to help with wound healing. Uh, at the superficial level. But if you have an injur injury more internal to you, that hyaluronic acid is definitely going to speed up healing uh, and make it faster. But what I want you to really understand is why you should care about hyaluronic acid or HA content uh, in your body. So for one thing, it's that hyaluronic acid that uh, imbibes water so it actually takes the water that you're drinking and pulls it into the extracellular matrix, kind of like a water container system for your cells. So we have the extracellular matrix, right? And then we have the actual cells of your body in the intracellular environment or what's happening inside the cells of your body. And as most of you know, hydration is really important, right? And we all know we should be drinking X amount of water every day. But the thing is, you could drink and drink and drink water, but if it's not getting into your cells, it's almost useless. So when we talk about hydration, we actually are talking about cellular hydration. So you got to get that water that you're drinking into your cells. So if the extracellular matrix part of your fascial system has lost its water content, has become brittle and dehydrated, and no longer has stores of water for your cells to make use of, then your cells are going to start to become dehydrated and a whole bunch of bad things can happen from there. So as a human being, you're anywhere from 50 to 70% water content physically. And a lot of that water content is in your fascial system or it's supposed to be, right? So some of it is in the fascial system and then some of it is supposed to be, of course, intracellular or inside those cells. So that's just one reason you should really care about the health of your fascia uh, and this hyaluronic acid synthesizing that this fascicite does inside your fascial matrix. But that's just one thing that you should care about. The other is glide or fluid movement of muscle fiber 
fascial fiber, tendons, ligaments, and nerves. All of those things need to actually glide, um, and they're gonna glide due to the water content, again, in your fascial system. So if you're an athlete or you care about moving with fluidity instead of stiffness, achiness, heaviness, dullness, all of that, then you have to hydrate your fascial system uh, and actually get that water content into your cells and then have a water-rich extracellular matrix so that your fascial system is gliding like it needs to or supporting the glide of the surrounding tissues, right? So fascia wraps the nerve um, endings, it wraps the muscle fibrils, it wraps the muscle bundle, right? And so all of those need to glide for you to function efficiently as a mover in the world. Um, and so that's another reason. And then of course, is just freeing up the energy stores of your body and the communication. Uh, but the thing that I need you to understand or that I hope you take away from this video, if you take nothing else away, is that you can only create or produce more hyaluronic acid when you learn to work with fasciocytes and give the fasciocytes the stimulation or the environment that they need to produce it or synthesize it in the first place. And so this new research coming out of Europe is saying, uh, Carlos Stecco has proved scientifically, and you can read those papers if you want to, that fasciocytes respond to a loaded compression or a weighted compression of some kind onto the fascial system uh, combined with shearing of the fascial fibers. And this differs greatly from just compression and stretching, so a pin and stretch, for example, or simple manual manipulation or movement from an outside forest, for example, a massage therapist. So the main difference here is that a pin and stretch of any kind, whether you're using a foam roller or getting a massage or getting some assisted stretching with some compression, right? And then um, maybe it's a personal trainer helping you out. Uh, that's gonna do some good for sure. And it's gonna affect your fascial system, but it's gonna do it in a different way. It's gonna affect the fibroblasts, which are responsible for collagen production, but not your fasciocytes. And so apparently, I've been doing this for years, but I didn't know there was science to back me up here. Um, but there's a big difference between, uh, you know, shearing those fascial fibers versus just compressing the fascial system versus just trying to manipulate it from the outside. You have to shear those fascial fibers to uh, get those the fasciocytes to synthesize hyaluronic acid. So I know this is like super sciencey and a lot to think about here, um, but the reason this matters so much is if you listen to the, just the first part of my video and then you went and like did some pin and stretch or some yin yoga or any of the other ways that you're trying to stretch your fascia but you didn't actually uh, get that shearing effect, then you're not gonna get the benefit of hyaluronic acid production from those fasciocytes synthesizing it for you and thus you're not gonna get the HA to imbibe water, and you're not gonna necessarily rehydrate your cells because it doesn't really do anything. It'll promote collagen production instead. There you have it. Lots of really cool, interesting new science coming out. I love this stuff, so share your takeaway below. I'm gonna come talk to you for sure. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this. And then of course, everything I'm teaching you here at Mobility Mastery, both the YouTube channel and the blog, if I'm teaching you a technique, for like from the beginning of this blog in 2015 when I first started, every single technique is attempting to teach you first and foremost how to pin or compress and shear fascial fibers. There are some techniques that are maybe more gonna fall into the pin and stretch category, either because of the body part that you're on or the necessity of that being what's available for self-help versus working with someone like me in person. Um, so I just want you to start to think about this and pay attention because a lot of the techniques here um, could be, like all of them could just be a pin and stretch. So if you're not, you know, really hunting out the adhesions and being really diligent about shearing those fascial fibers, uh, then you may not get the added benefit of increasing the water content through the production of more hyaluronic acid. Um, so. There you go. I'm probably gonna do more videos on this topic because I am just learning about it right now and I'm sure I'm gonna learn even more uh, as I move forward with my own research and then kind of testing it, you know, myself and with clients 
Um, but there you go. HA, hyaluronic acid, uh, super important, critical for cellular hydration and glide, amongst many other things that we'll return to in other videos. So share your thoughts below. If you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. I come out with new videos every Monday and Wednesday. And also if you're new here, join my email community because I do email trainings I don't do anywhere else just for you guys. And I also have some free resources for you depending on when you land on this video. Uh, we've got some PDF guides, we've got a kinetics demo perhaps, and then we're working on other new things. So if you're landing on this later, you might get access to one of the new things we're working on. So I hope you'll join me and I think that's it for now. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.